Hi, I'm Josh Vandre here, talking to Ansible for network automation, and today we're looking at Ansible config generation, leveraging templating. Let's take a look. So at the end of the session, you'll have worked with a few templates to build various configuration stanzas. We're going to take a couple methods for working with Jinja 2 templates, and so we're going to template from a file to a file, so you can go ahead and share this information with others. And then if you have access to network devices, we're also going to share you how to take from a template file and go directly to iOS, which will also play in for other networking vendors as well. Before we get into our demo, let's talk a little bit about Jinja the templating language of choice for Ansible. So Ansible does leverage a framework called Jinja 2. There is a Jinja 1 version as well, although in my time I have not heard too much about Jinja 1. Doing some research, I did find that there is such a thing. Jinja 2 is the templating language that is most commonly used, I would say, in these days for Python-based languages. Jinja 2 itself isn't something that is built just for Ansible. It is used by Python and other frameworks. So first off, Jinja 2 is modeled after Django's templating language. So when we look at this, Django is a, another Python web framework. This is a language used across Python. It can be used in native Python scripting alone, so you could just write a Python script to do what we're about to do. But I do like Ansible a little bit further in that it gives us a little bit more of a framework to build off individual devices. And then Jinja 2 is also portable. The popular Python automation framework Nornir is actually using Jinja 2 as part of its templating language as well. So what you learn here is going to be applicable in multiple facets, not just your Ansible world. All right, let's start taking a look at Jinja 2 templates. Before we get started here, let's take a look at the folder structure that we've gotten. I've made a couple tweaks here, uh, and then we'll review this a little bit further. First off, at the top, we see configs. Configs is something that I've chosen that is nothing special for Ansible. It's what I've decided that I'm going to put the configuration outputs for each of the files. In the group vars folder, we've got two more groups files that we've added here. We've got one for data center switches, and we've got one for remote switches. This way we can separate out the layer two VLANs for if it's in the data center or if it's at a remote site. Inside the host bars folder, we've now got item for every device that we're gonna make configs for. We'll take a look at a few of these and separate those out and go down the path a little bit more yet here. The last thing that is a special thing that I've been missing from the previous demonstrations is the templates folder. The templates folder is a special folder that Ansible looks at. So if you're doing some sort of anything with a template as we're gonna demonstrate here today, Ansible knows to go ahead and look in that folder for these particular files and not have to define that. I do always prefer that you define putting templates because it is good practice in there. So you'll see that that's how most of the playbooks are actually structured. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the items in the folders here. First, we'll go into the group bars. So when we take a look at these, we've got our all YAML file there up on top. It looks the same, DNS servers, uh, just 9999. And then we have our data center routers. That's the same from before with demonstrating different DNS servers. Looking at the two switch files, really the big difference is that the data center has an additional VLAN 201 that we see right here versus the remote switches has just the same three VLANs, two, three, and 100. That's the difference there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the host bars that we have. So the host bars, and I'm not gonna scroll up, but basically there's a host bar entry for every site. We've got our routers that have loopback 12 and loopback 13 addresses added. So we'll be able to see what that looks like. We won't actually deploy those. And then we've got our very last one for the site 01, switch 01. There we've got some layer three addresses that we need to have on the switch. So we've got our VLAN two and a layer three address defined for that. Let's take a look at our tree one more time. And we want to start to take a look at some of these templates now that we wish to show. So let's go ahead and do that. Look at the first one for L3 interfaces will be a good one for us to look at. And I'm, I'm going to split my screen up a little bit here. And I'm going to bring up what that actually will look like for a single host bar. Let's look at router 4. 
So on the left, what's going to happen? First off, we see our first iteration of Jinja. Jinja, it looks like it's going to be a normal interface, except for it's got a few special characters involved here. First, we've got the curly braces and the percent sign in there. So when we see a left curly brace percent sign, that's the start of a special function within Jinja. So you can do four loops in here. And there's also some commenting that you can do. I encourage you to double check and take a look at the Jinja documentation pages, which we'll have a link for. So at the beginning, we say our four interface and interfaces. So what that's doing, if we go to the right side and we see our interfaces, it's going to loop over each of those items in the list. How, how do we know that's a list? Because in YAML, the dash indicates that's a list item. So we have a couple dashes in the first time through. We're going to have We'll substitute this through as we go. So interface is on the left side. So interface dot name. And as we look at dot name on the first item in the list, we have loopback 12. So we're going to have the config output as interface loopback 12. And then as we go through IP address, then we have our interface dot IP address. This once again corresponds on the right side to the first interface and in IP address shown there. The last variable we have in there is interface dot subnet mask. So that's going to go over to the right side again in we're in our first item and get that subnet mask. Note there the double curly brace is special setup for Jinja, and that is indicating that this is a variable. So it won't actually print out that text. And then one of the differences compared to Python is with a for loop, you just go through four and then you fix your indentation and you're done with the for loop. Here we actually have to define the end for to say that we're at the end of the loop. So let's go ahead and run our playbook to take a look at that. So we're going to do Ansible playbook. Then I'll create config file. To file dot yaml. And that generated the layer two, and that was only the switches. So we're actually going to do the config file for file two, which is going to create the layer three. So then it's created the files. When we take a look at our tree again, we now see we've got a bunch more in the configs file. So let's take a look at one of these configs, and specifically for router four. So when we take a look at that, we've got our interface loopback 12. We've got our IP address that corresponds with the IP address on the right. And then we got our loopback 13. If we take a look at the next one for router 3, it's going to look very much the same. So that's how we template for the layer 3. Okay, so how, how did we do that? Let's first take a look at the playbook. I'm going to go ahead and just take a look. Let's take a peek at this playbook all together. So this is a pretty short playbook all together. We've got a single play and a single task. First, let's go over the connection and the host. So the connection is local on this. So that just means we're running this on our local host. Our host, we are saying all because we want to loop through our inventory and create a file for each one of these. And how do we make sure that we're not connecting to a device to run this? We see on our task number one here, we have our delegate to localhost. So that's going to mean it's going to run on my local machine, not connect to another device to do that. Our task one is generate configuration to a text file. We're using the template module, and you can get some more details about the template module out on the Ansible docs page that we've seen before. And it, all this takes is a source. So there we've got, again, I actually did not include the templates directory on this. So it, it's looking for iOS underscore L3 underscore interfaces J2. And it's taking a look in that templates folder to get that. And then the destination, we're going to our local directory here, configs. And then we threw in the inventory host name. So that way, that's how we got the router three name, router four name in each of those config files. And then we put dash L3 underscore interfaces.cfg. If we want to generate a whole bunch of config different pieces, say we create L3 interfaces, then we do our NTP and, and our SNMP, you'll want to be able to have each of those separate and in a different file. Now, if you wanted, you could put this all in one big, large Jinja template, but that starts to get a little more complicated. And I do encourage you to break it out so that way it's a little bit more module and portable. Next thing I want to do is take a look at the next item we're going to take a look at. We're going to send the config to a device. On this, we're going to create a template for our DNS 
I'm going to show both ways of using iOS config and CLI config. They're both basically will do the same thing, but we want to make sure that I show both styles for you. So again, a single play. This time we've moved our connection to be network underscore CLI because we are going to connect out to network devices. Task zero, that looks a little bit familiar. That's gathering credentials for the connection to the devices. Task one, then we are just going to use the iOS config module. There it takes a source. And I've gone ahead and defined that of templates slash iOS underscore DNS J2. And then we're also going to use that to save the config because it is good to save when you're actually making changes. And then we're going to register that to the iOS config output. That could be interesting for us to look at. And then task two, this is using the newer Red Hat developed module of CLI underscore config. And here, take a look at the config. It's doing a lookup here. It's going, and we've got some Jinja formatting within the config, but that's not actually Jinja. That's just saying Ansible. Let's, this is an Ansible piece here. We're looking up, we're using the style of templates, and then we're grabbing the template file there of templates slash iOS underscore DNS. And then lastly, on task three, we're going to go ahead and write the config on its own from the CLI command. And what does that template look like? So we'll take a look. And less iOS DNS templates. So this is a short for loop. It's for a DNS server in DNS servers. We're going to put IP name dash server and the DNS server and then the N4. So it's pretty short there. And if you want to have some templates where you want to have Junos or Dell OS in here, it's nice to put the actual OS in the front because that will help to have this be a little bit modular using that Red Hat script that is the CLI config and be able to connect to various devices and deploy the template that based on its format. So we'll go ahead and run this playbook. And we have to ask for our vault password because it is going to unlock the credentials. So now at this point, it's going out, logging in. It's configuring the devices for iOS. And there's all the output that has been done. So iOS config gives us what's been done, the config. And then as we look, we see that task two, everything is green because it's redoing the same thing. It doesn't need to actually make changes. And then task three, it's writing the config. So at this point, DNS has been configured on each of the devices. So to review what we've accomplished today, we've worked with templates to build various configuration stanzas. We've taken a couple different looks at deploying Jinja 2 with Ansible. First off, templating from a file, two more files for use on a file system. And then we've also taken a look at the two different ways to template a file and send that out to a network device. Be careful if you're doing any configuration because this is something with automation. You can do a lot very shortly and a lot can either be good or it can also be very bad. So make sure that you've done any configuration testing in a lab and not just going out straight into production. Mm -hmm.